All right, here's a cool application of uh, concavity and inflection points. It says a company will sell capital N of X units after spending X, which is in thousands of dollars. Um, in advertising, it was supposed to say, let me go ahead and fix that. looks like I uh, lost track of what I was doing. This After they spend this much money on advertising, according to, kind of fit that in, according to, N of X <laughs> equals negative 0 0.5 X to the fourth plus 26 X to the third minus 360 X squared plus 20,004. And I made another mistake, or maybe my eraser just caught it. Um, that should have been a 10 when X is between 10 and 24. Okay, so obviously they spend money on advertising, um, and it says they're at least going to spend $10,000 on advertising, but they might spend up to $24,000. I guess they could uh, rearrange their budget that way. And you would think, well, the more money they spend on advertising, the more they're going to sell, right? And yeah, that's true. But maybe there's an optimum amount to spend, right? Maybe there's more to it than just we spend as much as we can. Um, and so that's kind of what this is going to get at. Okay, so the first part asks, when are the sales increasing for X between 10 and 24? So we'd like to know how much money should we spend so that our sales are on the on the rise right that would that would be better than our sales declining <laughs> so let's see maybe if they don't spend enough money on advertising then you know who knows i don't know all right let, let's just see what happens um well when are the sales increasing that's actually about the first derivative right so um that's the increasing test so we just need the first derivative of n of x, n prime of x. So if we go about that, it'll give us negative 2x to the third plus 78x squared minus 720x. Okay, so we're kind of bringing different, um, all these ideas kind of together. All right, if we want to know more about increasing, then we needed to set that first derivative equal to 0 and solve. Okay, so setting our first derivative equal to zero. All right. Well, here um, again, you know, the answer at least begin by factoring. Um, each of these three terms has a negative two and an x in common, so I'm going to factor out negative two x, leaving me with x squared minus thirty nine x plus three hundred sixty. And all right, what can we do further? If you can tell how that factors, if it does factor, then go for it. Um, when I was doing this problem and I looked at this, I did not immediately see how that factored. So I just said, well, I'm going to set both of what I've got here equal to zero separately. And I know that that will lead me to one answer, x equals zero. Um, and for the other one, I used, well, I used the quadratic formula. So there you go. My A is 1, my B is negative 39, my C is 360. So I put that in. And I started simplifying, and, you know, a couple of these things simplify, you know, nicely. I've got positive 39. Turns out what's underneath there on that square root is exactly 81 which is really great. So I've got 39 plus or minus the square root of 81 over 2, which uh, 
gives me actually a couple of nice answers. 39 plus or minus 9 over 2. Um, when I add, I get 24. When I subtract that, I get 15. So I actually came up with uh, three answers to this, uh, 0, 24, and 15. Now you think, wait a second, they only asked about x being between 10 and 24. So these two are OK. The 0, though, does not fall in the domain 0 to, uh, excuse me, 10 to 24. So even though I got that as an answer, I can just disregard it and just focus on, you know, on these two. OK, so that's when the first derivative equals 0. Um, I also need to think about when the first derivative does not exist. Well, for this first derivative, you know, we're, we're never going to divide by 0, anything like that. So um, it's good to note that does not produce any more critical numbers. OK, so in the end, I'm really just walking away with these two. All right. At this point, I'm going to make my domain line. And because they told me that x is between 10 and 24, then that's my domain. I don't need to consider anything outside of that. So I'll just say it begins at 10 and it ends at 24. Um, one of my criticals was 24. Well, that's already kind of part of my, my domain anyway. Uh, but the other answer I got was 15, so I definitely need to mark that someplace. And I chose to put it a little bit closer to the 10, you know, try to scale it as best I could. Um, and okay, well, you know what's going to come next? We need to test both of our intervals. And because we're testing for increasing and decreasing, we're going to use the first derivative. Um, so I decided to pick x equals 11 for that first interval. So when I plug that in to the first derivative, which was what, negative 2x to the third plus 78x squared minus 720x. When I plug that into the first derivative, I got negative 1,144, which is a negative value. So let's put a negative sign. And of course, we need to test the other one. We probably get an idea of what how that's going to come out. Um, I chose to pick x equals 16. So putting that into the first derivative uh, just so happened to give me 16. That was a coincidence. In any case, it's positive. And so I can answer the question. I know where the sales are increasing between 15 and 24, really, um, the sales are increasing when this company spends anywhere between $15,000 and $24,000 on advertising. But I'm just going to go ahead and write it like an interval, 15 to 24. OK. Uh, turns out there's a part B here. Oh, now this is kind of cool. What is the point of diminishing returns? Uh, so this is an interesting idea and, and just how it connects to concavity. Turns out the point of diminishing returns, I'll just show you my, my graph here, um, that's the point of fastest growth. So when your growth is increasing at the fastest rate, then you've hit the point of diminishing returns. Um, and what that looks like is an inflection point, right? So this whole way, you could think, you know, uh, your sales are increasing, right? This represents how many units you're selling as you raise how much you're spending on advertising. Well, the more you spend on advertising, you know, the more 
the more you're going to sell. Um, but there's a point where, yes, you know, you can spend more and sell more of your product, but you're getting less back, you know, per dollar that you spend on advertising. Um, it gets you more sales, but it's it's not the return you were getting back here. So we want to find, and maybe our company wants to know, um, what's the optimum amount to spend on advertising, right? So hopefully that makes sense. And it turns out that's an inflection point, but it it's not even just any inflection point. It's when it goes from concave up to concave down. If it was to go the other direction, then, you know, that's not what we want at all, right? We don't want to go from, from down to up because that means that our sales are dropping, right? So we don't, we don't want that. We want concave up to concave down, right? We're going up, and then it starts to level off. Okay. Well, if we're talking about inflection points, concavity, of course, we need the second derivative. So, oh, I happen to have our first derivative there. So our second derivative with the polynomial, not too bad, uh, n double prime of x equals negative 6x squared plus 156x minus 720. And by this point, man, we've gone through this procedure quite a number of times. So what are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to set that second derivative equal to 0. Um, and you can tell we're also going to consider when the second derivative does not exist. And, well, none, because we never divide by x. So let's just get that out of the way. Um, when is that second derivative equal to 0? Well, again, factoring you know, might do it for us. So I'll go ahead and let's get rid of this. I think this is – don't want to confuse anybody. What is that doing on the – um, let's go ahead and start factoring. We can take a negative 6 out. Leaves us with x squared minus 26x plus 120. And this one, when I was doing the problem, I happened to notice how that factored right away. So that saves some time if you can spot how it factors. Uh, x minus 20, x minus 6. And if you go ahead and set both of these factors to 0, then you've got two answers, x equals 20, x equals 6. Kind of something similar to the last problem, our domain is only from 10 to 24. So when we get that 6, we can just cross it right out. We don't need to consider that one. Uh, only the 20 falls between. Okay. And, well, you know what's next. <laughs> We're going to test each interval. So I'll just go ahead and show you. Uh, I chose x equals 11 again for that first interval, but now we're plugging into the second derivative. And when I did that, I got positive 700, excuse me, 270. And then I picked 21 to go into the second interval. Putting that into the second derivative gave negative 90. So, of course, you don't have to pick 11 or 21, as long as you pick anything that's in the interval. But I like to keep the value small. Keep it simple. Uh, in any case, you get that it's concave up here, concave down there. So that's an inflection point, and it's the right kind of inflection point even. So the point of diminishing returns. And I think it's appropriate for this question to just say that it occurs at x equals 20 or when you're spending $20,000 on advertising. Of course, you, you might um, plug that number back into the original function. You know, maybe if you wanted to know exactly how many units you're selling.
but I, th I think in a question like this, we really want to know how much to spend on advertising. So if you spend 20,000 on advertising, then you've, um, you are maximizing your return on your investment, if you will. Okay, that is the end of 4.2. Uh, homework is up. Bring your questions to the Zoom meeting. See you there.